Okay, we talked about operator overloading, and we said of, um, uh, the meaning of overloading is that first something should exist to be able to change it. And we said all the operators that we have in C++, they are, uh, they are you, you, are, you, can, you can overload them, but uh, uh, there are some exceptions that you are responsible to go and find out and read the, 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 the notes and see which ones you cannot. Uh, uh, overloading an operator is uh, exactly like overloading a function. All you need to know is what the signature of the, all you need to know is to recognize what the signature of the uh, operator is, and then you can rewrite the signature, change the types of the arguments, and you have overloaded it successfully. The only difference between overloading uh, an operator and overloading a function is that you can overload a function by changing the number of arguments, where in operators you have to always have the exact same amount of arguments. You just make the, the types different, and that's how you overload. So if, for example, we have a plus between a plus in arithmetic that is between integers and doubles and stuff like that. Now you want that plus to work for employees, then you have to make sure that the operands of the plus is designed to be for employees. Still two arguments, you cannot make it one, you cannot make it three. It has to be identical to what a plus operator is, therefore you can overload it. We started the example by creating a class called container. And we said the container class of ours, the container class of ours has a capacity and a volume. That was a good example to go through uh, creation um, of, a, of, uh, of different types of operator overloading. We created constructors for, that, for it, um, setters and constructors and uh, different uh, queries and modifiers, as you see. And then we started overloading operators to do what those uh, functions do. We said, for example, an operator plus equal is an operator that has a side effect. We said every single operator that we are going to overload, initially we have to try to make it a member operator. Why is that? Because we are learning object orientation. Everything must be a member of a class unless there is no way around it. So although we can overload all the operators as a uh, standalone, uh, uh, as standalone uh, functions, but we should not. The reason is that we are trying to do everything object oriented. It's a very legit reason, reason for it. So, uh, and we said that every single operator that we have, it accepts two arguments, left argument and right argument. If it's a binary operator, obviously, Binary operators who have left and right, we have to try to first make that operator a member of the left operand and then receive the right operand as a single argument. Therefore, the plus equal that we see over there. So the plus equal we designed over there from what we see, because it's a member of a container and it receives a volume at right, obviously the situation for it will be that it is going to receive a container. Question? Oh, okay. So something like that, if I have container C, so this is essentially is plus equal, let's say 10, something like that, which means at left side I have a container and right side I have an integer, and therefore I made the plus equal a member of the container receiving an integer and that's the result. Obviously, my uh, uh, container over here, uh, my operator is re returning a container, which means the real thing over here is having something like this. But we have to put emphasis that we are overloading plus equal, not assignment. Okay, assignment is an operator of its own. The only reason that I'm putting it over there is to show you that the plus equal operator is returning a container after it's done its operation. Are we all okay with this? Then we talked about unary operators and we said all the unary operators are members of their, uh, of, are members of their 
All the unary operators are uh, unary prefix operators are members of their uh, members of their uh, oper uh, operand. So essentially, if I have plus plus, uh, if I want to overload plus plus, it's going to be plus plus c, and that's actually the over the, the overload is for that. And because it's returning a container, I can say d is set to. And the reason I put so much space over there just to have emphasis, again, we are overloading the, pl uh, the plus plus over here, not the assignment. Assignment only shows what it returns. So it would be a better thing to actually do something like this to understand that we are actually returning the value out and we can put the value. The reason I'm doing that is just to show you that this is returning a value that could be inserted into another, uh, another thing. Are we good with that? Is there a question? Yes, it, that's why it has side effect. It will not what? It, it doesn't return a container. It returns a container that overrides D. It doesn't return the D itself. The reason I put D over there and I put that arrow thingy just to show the product of plus equal after everything is done is a container. How do you catch a container? You put a container over there at left so it overwrites it. If I put an integer at left, then you would have returned an integer, okay? D is not part of this situation at all. So let's put it like this. Result. So the result of what we have, the outcome of what we have, is another container that is being returned. Does that make sense? All right. And then we said unary operators, they have two freaky misfits in their family, and they are postfix plus plus operators. Okay? And all, all plus plus and minus minus, they are just freaky as they are. Why? Because first of all, they, they have side effects. No unary operator has side effect. All the unary operators, usually what they do, they get the information from their operand and they return something. They don't change their operand. The only two operators that are cuckoo are plus plus and minus minus. First of all, they have side effect. Secondly, uh, they, can have, they can be postfix. None of the other operators can be postfix. Okay? For that, because it was... Uh, something crazy, they had no implementation for its signature, they invented something. They said, if there is an int over here, then it's a postfix. So it's essentially exactly the same thing. But if you want to force it to be post, postfix, you, you just stick an integer over there. That forces this to be postfix. Okay, so there is no... Uh, they couldn't build any signature for it, so they came up with something ugly. And, as, and, and that's what you see. So the int inside operator plus plus doesn't mean that it receives anything. As a matter of fact, you cannot actually pass anything to it. Then it becomes a binary operator if you do that. If it was operator plus plus int a, then that plus plus must be a binary. Left side is the container, right side is an integer. Because it's not, then... That's what it is. So that int doesn't mean anything. It's just a flag. So, so the int is just a flag for postfix and not an argument. Yes. You can go ask the person who designed the compiler. Can you recognize that? That it's not an argument? No, no, no. Just a second. Can plus plus have an argument? 
when you put an argument, it's an impossible thing, correct? Therefore, it's postfix. It is impossible for plus plus to receive an argument because it's a unary operator, correct? That's how it recognizes it. If you put it for any other type of unary operator, it's going to complain. The only one you can do is plus plus and minus minus. And how the compiler recognizes is not our business as this slage. That is in university when you are doing compiler design. If the compiler can recognize is our concern. Can the compiler recognize? Yes. How? If it's a plus plus and a minus minus and only those two. No other unary operator can accept that. So if you see a plus plus or a minus minus with an int as argument, it means it's postfix. Okay? How does it recognize? We don't care. The fact that it can recognize is our concern. Am, am I making sense? Am I making sense or you're not satisfied? I have no idea. I've never done it. Like, I don't know if I put over here integer A, B, C, what's going to happen? Because it just doesn't make sense. Does it make sense? Are you passing an integer to it? No. I just mentioned that this is a freaky thing, okay? And that is not an argument. It's only a flag. And now we are saying, what happens if I put something? I don't know. I've never done it. We can try it. <laughs> I don't know. I've never done it. So I've never done over. If I, the problem is that if I do that now, half of the class think it can be done. That's why I'm not going to answer your question. I will not put anything in here. If you want, privately we can do it together in our computer so no one can see it. Because this int will never receive an argument. That int is not an int. It's a flag. OK? All right. Yeah. So then we created uh, binary operators that had no side effect. And we enforced that with a const after the binary operator. So now this plus that I have over here actually can receive two things. So it can receive a container, A and B, and result. Result is the thing at left. So I'm going to say result can be set to uh, say A plus B, which means plus is a member of A, and it receives a, a constant B at right, and it cannot change the A. OK? So what does this say? It says plus is a member of A that receives a constant B, which means the right operand, which it cannot change. And the plus cannot change either A either because, oh, where do I put it? It's at the top. Why do I put it over here? Sorry, 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 sorry. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> so as I was saying, uh, a is a uh, plus is a member of A um, and cannot change A because it's constant. So the operator itself cannot change the owner. Uh, the B that is passed through is a constant too. So it cannot change that one. So how do we, how can we find the sum of two as a container? We have to build a temporary one. It cannot return the current object because the current object is constant. It's not going to change. Nothing's accomplished. So we create a container, and we define what, a, what does it mean adding up two containers, and we return that one. OK? Are we OK with this? And that is a temporary container that is going to die. OK? So yeah. And I have done it in a kindergarten way. There is a professional way of doing that. But I'm doing it uh, in a very primitive way, like C++ 101. When we go to copy constructors, and when you understand what a copy construct and copy assignment is, then you will see that we, can, we should have done it in another way and what it really means. Returning, I want your attention, something I want you to engrave in your brains, OK? Returning a value, returning a value is a very 
tricky and expensive thing to do in C++. You should try to avoid it at all costs, unless you have to, like this scenario. All the other ones, I am returning this. I am returning a reference of the current object. I am not returning anything by value. I am either, I'm, I'm always, I'm returning a reference. Returning a reference doesn't return anything. It just says that the operator is going to present the current object. That's all. It's not going to return anything. But returning something by value, it means you're actually returning something from one scope into another. It's a big thing to do. When I'm just returning the reference, I'm saying, that's the one. I'm not building anything new. I'm just showing to you what I have. Returning something by up, by, by value, it means returning the whole thing out. And the problem is that you cannot return the whole thing out. Think about it. Isn't res inside the scope of this function? How can you then return it? It gets destroyed. So compiler has to jump through hoops and do some crazy stuff to be able to return it. We'll learn that when we are learning copy construction. Okay? So it's a very expensive thing to do, extremely expensive thing to do. What does it mean expensive? Lots of memory and lots of time. Beautiful answers. 2% for each of you. Okay? Rem remind me of that. So expense. Moolah in computer science is memory and time. Remember that. Okay, when I say it's expensive, it means it's it lots, lots of time. In OP345, we're going to learn new ways of saving time. Okay? The assignment operator is a very special operator. It's the only operator can, that cannot be a standalone function. You cannot overload the assignment operator as a standalone function if you want to. It has to be a member. Why? Because the sky is high. Again, just remember that. An assignment can never be non-member. It has to be a member, even if it's binary or whatever. Like, so, and it's a, it is a binary operator. You cannot have an assignment as unary. So the binary assignment operator cannot be non-member. So what does it do? Again, as you see over here, it receives a, a container as constant because it's not supposed to change what is copying. And it co makes a copy out of that one the way it's supposed to, the way our business logic is actually required. So if I have a result and A, then I will have over here result. Actually, no. Uh, Result A and B. So in here, I'm going to say result A set to B. So as we see over here, uh, the operator equal is owned by A, that is the left operand. It receives a constant B, which means it's not going to change. Obviously, it has to change the left operand because it's assigning it to the right operand. And after this action, the reference of the left operand is returned. And that's the result of the, of the whole situation. Now, we are overloading the assignment operator. Oh, at those top ones, we were not. And somebody said, I think it was you pouring from one to another, was it? So somebody says, so assignment cannot be pouring. It's like you're emptying a container and adding new thing. What if I want to add to the value? And we said we can invent a new uh, operator for that. We can use one of the operators that makes sense. And the uh, insertion operator uh, seems to seem to be a good one. So when I do something like this, I'm going to say I'm going to take this stuff out of this one and move it to this one. So kind of a move the stuff from here to here. OK? Uh, and we didn't do it properly, actually. We kind of did it. But the, the proper way of doing this that you're going to do in your workshop for operators is that when moving is happening, the right one might not get empty. You may. You may just have enough space to put it so something will be left at the right. So we may have to do stuff like that. 
Then we learned when we talked about, then we talked about standalone operators and when do we need them. Standalone operators are needed in two scenarios and two scenarios only. Number one, the object at left side of the operator is not accessible. Which, what I mean is that you didn't write it. You don't have access to its source code. You cannot go into its CPP file and header file and add a new and overload a new operator. You can't do that. You don't have access to it. Because of that, and because of that, the fact that it has to stand at left side, then you cannot make it a member. Therefore, helper operators happen, like printing. When you are inserted, like insertion operator, when I am inserting the uh, container into C out, when I'm inserting a container to C out, so and I'll go C out C and I'll go over here and L. This operator has a C out at left and a C at right. Therefore, the binary operator that is standalone will receive two arguments. So this essentially will be the left operand. And the container is going to be the right operand. We are not supposed to change anything when we are printing them. We are not supposed to change anything when we are printing them. Therefore, we always receive it as constants when we are printing them, when we are inserting them to C out. The left side is C out, the right side is RO. I put it at left, I put this one at, at, at right, and so therefore when C out is going to get printed with C, first the compiler checks, does OStream have a member function that accepts a container? Obviously not, because we created the container. Therefore it jumps to the next thing. Is there a, a standalone operator defining this action? Yes, it is. So it actually goes to that one, passes C out to the left operand's reference, and passes the container C to the right-hand operate. It will receive it, and if you have followed my instructions to create your display properly, it will just fit in. That's why I always say you should create your display so OStream flows through it. I pass the C out to display. Display gets that C out using that prints it on a screen, and then returns the C out, and it returns the O stream. Therefore, the outcome of this operation will be C out coming out. Therefore, this part of the operation, which is C out, uh, insertion of C into C out, will be replaced by C out. Therefore, the next printout can happen. And it happens like that, and it keeps going. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, the cascade of actions happen. And we stop right there. Uh, the time was up. OK? So uh, now what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to start something completely new. So instead of working on container again, I'm going to create a, a, an actual module, a, cl a class. And we start that class together. OK? So we're going to create a new module for something that's going to be useful. And you can add to its features and actually use it when, you, when the time comes. So this one is going to be review. <laughs> Any questions down to here? Questions? Suggestions? Objections? Yes. Pardon me? Wait, 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 wait. Let me bring it up. The display function, when we use the O stream, there you go. One more time. You're talking about what this means? Yeah. What is an ampersand beside the type?
I said, if you recall, I said, trust me on this, memorize this. After the study break, when we get to virtuals, you'll see what its usage is. Okay? And uh, there is no address here. You just use the very wrong terminology. There is no address in here. It's a reference. I am sending a reference of the printing object, the object that his job is to print. And I'm giving that to display. Why don't I do that? Why don't I use this C out globally as I always did? So the user in future have a chance to pass another type of printing object here, like a file. So your display not only works for screen, it's also upgradable for file printing, upgradable for network printing, to pass it through network, upgradable to whatever you want, wherever you want to do output. So your display is not stuck to see out. It's upgradable. Okay? And because we know everybody's used to see out, we put the default value as see out. So you, if you don't put it, see out is your baby over there. Are we okay? Good question. So I'm going to add a new class. And I'm going to call that class string. So we want to create a class string to get rid of all the gibberish that we are doing with that string header file. I want string to be like a variable. I do not want to think that a string is not a variable. It's a null terminated array of character. I want to make that the engine of my string and encapsulate it, which means I can forget about it. I'll make the string work like a regular variable. Like integer, yes, you can set it to A. I want a string that I can add it to A, B, C, D. I add something to an integer. I want to be able to add something to my string. I want to find out the letters of my string. So I want the string to work like a single entity. So I'll make it a single entity, a complex single entity, which we call a compound type. Therefore, that's my string. Obviously, I'm going to put my own touches to it, which is, if not defined, sdds string h. Oh, not there. And then namespace sdds, because I am coding in the sdds department. And then I'm going to create the S, take a look at string.cpp. I do have the include. All I need to, S, to have is a string stds. So let's design the string together. First of all, before I design the string, I do not want to use the string header file at all. Because of that fact, I'm going to bring my own little functions for every single thing that I want to do a string. So I'm going to bring my own string copy, my own SDRN copy, and add it to the utilities. So my string will use my utilities for all these copying stuff. I do not want that uh, CRT secure, no warnings that is system dependent. I want to have everything by my own. So you will see that I'm going to bring the code. I'm not going to explain how those work if you want to. You can go find out how, how they work. That's IPC. So, and I want everybody's work on this thing. I want everybody to think about it for a second. I'll give you, it's 210. I'll give you, and I really want you to do that, okay? Think about it for five minutes. What does a string need to make a C string encapsulated? I'll correct that. I'll give you one minute <laughs> to think about it. Just think about it. If I want to encapsulate an array of characters that is null terminated, what are the things I want to be immediately available that I do not have in a C string? So I need to put it in my class so it's easily available to me. OK, think about those things. And then I'm going to come around with a microphone.
Discuss it with each other if you want to. Think about it. And don't discuss the dinner tomorrow. Discuss the string, please. <laughs> He's laughing. He was doing that. <laughs> Thirty seconds left. You're thinking about that? I do. And time's up. Okay. Volunteers. What is the very first thing that a string needs to have? Length. Length. So that's the thing. We don't have the length in a string. So it's a good idea to have it. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, a length of, length of a string cannot be negative, can it? So I'm going to make it an unsigned integer. And now, just letting you know, there is a built-in type in C++ for, because your length is essentially size of a string, right? So I'm introducing a new type. That is, behind the scene is actually an unsigned integer, OK? But uh, it is called size t. That's essentially, it is built into C, it means size. It cannot be negative. Okay? So that's that. And I'm going to put it, uh, you said in length? Okay, so now what else do I need to have over here to be able to encapsulate, and you cannot answer anymore, encapsulate a string? Anyone else? Any? An array to store the string? OK. If I have an array to store the string, will it accomplish what I want? What is the size of that array? Loud! We don't know. When you don't know the size of the array, what do you do? Dynamic memory allocation. Therefore, what do we need to store instead of an array? A character pointer. It's a good call. OK. so. Character pointer is going to be where I'm going to hold the string in, right? And it can be any size, and I'll resize it as I go. So I'm going to say character pointer data. That's the data of my string. Do I need anything else? Think about it. I have the length. I'm going to put the data in there. Pardon me? We're going to implement that way we are doing it. And when you say null terminator, does, does a programmer need to be aware of anything as null termination? No. They should treat this as a, as a variable. I want to be able to say string name equal to fardat and be done with it. I want it to be set to fardat. And then I want to print it, and I want to do a plus equal and add a solemnlu at the end. I want to do that. I want, to, I want it to be a variable. I don't want to, that freaking array anymore. OK? so. So that's that. So that's enough for now. And let's do it. So the very first thing I need to do over here is to make this thing uh, be, right? Initialize it, start it. How do you initialize uh, a class using a constructor? There you go. So I'm going to say over here string. And in here, I'm going to create, receive a constant character. Uh, C string, correct? That's what I'm going to do. And this is in the header file. Remember, this time I'm doing it properly, which means it's going to be in actually two places. So in here I'm going to implement, in there I'm going to write the prototype. So that's what I want to do. So what do I need to do in here? I need to uh, create the, the constructor. So I'm going to say string, string again and constant character pointer C string, correct? So the very first thing I need to do is to allocate enough space for what's coming in. And don't worry about the details. As I'm designing, I'm going to use it, and I see I need this feature too, that feature too, and I'm going to keep adding to it, OK? It's good when you are uh, the designer of the things. You feel like a god. Whatever you want to do, you do like you built it that way. You say, let it be, and it will be, right? So, so now, 
I want to add, so the very first thing I need to do is to do uh, a dynamic, because we are in a constructor, I, I do not need to set the data or stuff to null, but it's a good idea, since we learned we can do it, is to do something like this to make sure I have a clean thing to start with, right? And that kind of gives us our safe empty state. So what is our safe empty state? What is zero what? We have two, two of them. Which one? No, you can have a string that is, has nothing in it. It's a perfectly valid string. An empty string. What is a safe empty state? What is an impossibility for this? If there is no negative, psi t is not negative. It can only be positive. You can, you can only be zero and positive. You can see it. It's right in front of your face. Huh? <laughs> it's not a double. It's an integer. 0 0.1. <laughs> no? Come on. What is the first thing over there? Find five. No pointer. You cannot have an owl pointer. That's invalid. Okay, so that's our empty state. As, as soon as I do that, immediately I will actually take care of it. Immediately. I'm just going to write it right now, and I don't know if anybody else is going to use it. So I, immediately I'm going to say boolean is empty const, and I'm going to create, create the code for that, immediately re returning uh, m data being equal to null PTR. Right? So just because it was handy, I just did it. What the devil is that? Must be a modifier. Oh, what? Oh, double, double, double. Yeah. Thank you. OK, so let's do it. So the very first thing I'm going to do over here is to allocate enough memory for that. So I'm going to say m data is equal to new character. What do I put in here? How do I find the length? It's SDR len, right? Damn it, I don't have it. Because I don't have it, I'll add it. I'm trying to find my str len over here. str cat. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to go to my utils. I'm going to first add the utils to this thing. So add existing item. So I'll bring my utils in here. And I'm going to add. So in here, I'm going to say uh, C string, C string uh, tools. And in here, I'm going to say N C string tools, just to, uh, just to know what I have where. And that's going to be it. So SDR len. I want to find the string length that is in my utils. And how do I implement the SDR length? I did it a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And I'm going to use it if I can find it. There you go. That's my SDR length. And let me bring the utils.cpp up. So header file will go to right. Let's be organized. And this one's going to come in left. I don't need get int. I don't need that. I need this. There you go. That's my SDR length. OK, so that's going to find out what the length of the string is. If you don't know what. And now that I'm at it, I'm going to say size t. Fix it. So size t len and return the length. And I'm going to fix it over here, size t. Right? That's a better, better way of having SDR length since we just learned a length of a uh, string cannot be less than zero, right? OK. Do I need to check to see if the, the string is null or not? Don't be a hero. Do what the function is telling you. The function says SDR len, correct? It doesn't say check to see if the pointer is valid or not, right? Just do that. If a person is using that on a null pointer, their fault. Let their program crash, OK? So now I have the SDR len in here. All I need to do in my string is to include my utils. 
and in here I'm going to say u.strlen c string plus 1. Correct? So I allocated it. Now I will have to copy it into. Don't worry, I'm just going to copy the first two and then it's going to be less copying. So to copy, I need string copy. So to, string, to do string copy, I need to have a string copy. So I'm going to bring it. That's my string copy. Again, I'm going to make this size T. Who says we are not going to null terminate it? We're going to null terminate it, but behind the hood of a, in the engine. It's easier. If you want to find the end, yeah, oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. So maybe we later on will eliminate it. That's a very valid thing. He says, why are we doing it null term if we have the length? Just let's do everything with that. He's absolutely right. We could just ignore it. Well, because I don't have the code ready for it, and I don't want to code over here in front of you, always you can change it. Okay. For now, I am actually reusing my old code. So size ti. And it does the same thing. Why is it giving me an error? I don't. Let me just let me add it to the to the definitions of utils.h. So what string copy does, it copies the source into destination and returns the source in case you want it. OK? So that's my string copy. And let's use it. So now I'm going to say u.str copy into mdata the value of c string. Correct? And I should have set the length to. So in here, I'm going to say m length will be equal to, actually, let's, let's not make it, OK? I just noticed that I'm being, again, cryptic. m length is set to uh, I don't want to recall the function again. That's expensive. So in here, I'm just going to say m length, and, and that's it. So now the only thing that remains over here, now I have a constructor. I want to make this foolproof. Because I want it to be foolproof, I've got to make sure that C string is actually something, right? So what I need to do over here is to check if C string actually exists, do all these things. Otherwise, set it to a self safe empty state. Do I need to set it to a self empty state? No. I already did it in the description of the, of the class. The class is already created with everything null in it. If C string is null, it's not just going to do anything, and it's going to stay in a safe empty state. Are we OK with this? All right. So I created my string. The next thing I need to do is to be able to display it, correct? So what do I do? I'm going to come over here and say, how do I write display? O stream, remember that? So I'm going to go up first, include IO stream over here, include IO stream, and I'm going to have using namespace STD. So immediately I'm going to say O stream uh, reference display, O stream reference OSDR set to C out. As you see, it is, it is, oh no, uh, that's good actually. Not include to C out because that's in the header file only. So, <clears throat> and in, this is going to be a member of the str uh, a member of string. So let's take it to string. And it's a const. So I'm going to come in string and display it. And obviously, because I am in here, I need to have 
the I.O. stream. I am not allowed to use using because I'm in a header file. Therefore, I go STD scope resolution, STD scope resolution, and set a default value for those who want to use this, STD out. I have my display, and in the display, I'm going to say if not is empty, which we're going to learn change later on as we are going through. And, uh, I'm going to say OSDR uh, and MData. That's why we are making it null terminated, because OSDR knows C string and it prints it. If I don't do that, then I have to write a loop and print character by character. So it is easier. Does that make sense? OK. And then after this is done, I'm going to return the O stream. Are we OK with this? Are we OK with this? And then I'm going to have my eyes closed and do the operator overload that I know I need to do for C out, which is STD O stream reference operator. O stream reference, oh, STD, sorry, STD, O stream reference, OSDR, and at right side, I'm going to have a constant uh, string reference S, S, or right operand. So I immediately create this. Oh, I, am I outside of, yeah. And and it's going to be insertion operator, and that's that. So that's standard for everything. And how do we implement it? Again, this is one of the easiest thing you need to be able to do in tests. As soon as somebody gives you that, immediately you say what? Return right operands dot display. Right operands display passing the OSDR to it. Two seconds. You shouldn't even think about it. That should be something that is done by default in your brain in two seconds. And as you see now, I have my uh, things. Can I test this now, you think, and set the string to a name, see if I can print it? Can I test it? What is missing? What crucial thing is missing in here? Destructor. I need to, because I did dynamic memory allocation. Immediately do a destructor, otherwise you're going to have memory leak in your tester. We don't want that, right? So I'm going to create the destructor. It's going to be tilde string. So the destructor is created, and then... In the destructor, I simply delete the, C, the, the, the data. Do I need to set the length to zero here? Do I need to set the, why is it giving me an error? This intelligence is really. Oh, my bad. So this, the, the thing is correct. It's me that have problem. <laughs> okay, so this is good now. Okay. And string destructor. I think I have it. Uh, string destructor. Anyways, yeah. So do I need to set the M length to do zero? No, it's a destructor. Who cares? It's going to just die. Why do I care if the length had 52 when it was dying? Who cares, right? So I don't do it. Do I need to set the M data to null? No, it's dying, right? OK, so we're good. So now let's try it. Let's actually go over here and include our little uh, string header file, st include string.h. And we're going to say using namespace, namespace, sdds. In here, I'm going to say string name is set to fardad, and I'm going to say c out uh, name 
is here. And go to new line. And let's see if it works. I compile and run. If it hits the wall, then I'm going to go debug. Otherwise, it looks good to me. There we go. Bar that is here. I have created my variable. So now I have a string that I do not need to care about what to do. By the way, I did not overload the assignment operator. How come that worked? Because that's your, in your quiz today. Why the assignment work without op overloading it? Because assignment at the moment of creation is not an assignment. It's a one argument constructor. Correct? Assignment at the moment of creation is not an assignment. It's a one argument constructor. I can create a default constructor for this in two seconds to have an empty string and try it too. So in here, I'm going to come in, uh, in the string over here, and I'm going to say, in case they didn't put anything, make that null pointer. Therefore, no copying is going to happen. So I can have the next thing over here called empty. And I can say, see out, this is This is empty. And I'm going to do like that. And I'm going to put empty. And I'm going to do like this. And I'm going to go to new line and run it. And because I know that I checked to be, for it to be empty or not, it's going to be an empty string with absolutely no problem. Does anybody want to walk through this? Or we are OK down to this point? Because these are all reviews of constructor and dynamic memory allocation, I'm not. I'm not uh, walk-throughing it. Are we OK, everyone? So let's do the very first cool thing about this, an, op uh, an, an overload that I did not teach in, in this class. And that's type conversion op uh, overload. Type conversion operator overload. What is a type conversion? Casting, right? Casting. You want to be able to cast, you cast the double to an integer, and all the partial parts are gone. I want the same thing to be here. If I cast a string to an integer, what should I get? Hmm? No, when, like what do you think a, a, a cast to an integer for a string is good for? Huh? Oh, you want to do it that way. Wow, that's a tough one. I was going for returning the length. <laughs> but that, see, so it's not a good thing, probably. So I shouldn't do it, maybe. Maybe I shouldn't do it. Maybe I shouldn't do it. So what if I want my string to work with, to, what if I want my string to work with to work with standard C string if anybody wants to use it. What if I want to, so I'm going to save this over here. I'm going to say uh, a string dot CPP, uh, string main. What if somebody wants to use this with string header file? What if somebody wants to write include uh, C string and be able to have something like this, character C string 80, something like that. And, I'll, and they want to be able to do this, str copy into CS string the name. Can they do that? No. Name is a string. It cannot get. It's not, a, it's not a constant character pointer, correct? C string is, our string is not a constant character pointer. But one thing we know from C language, C language tries to cast it to what it needs to be. If it is castable, it will cast it. So my, I want to be able to give the person who's using string copy 
the conventional string to use my string as a normal string. How do I do that? I'm going to make it castable to C string, to, uh, to, to constant character pointer. So what I will do is this. And how does the casting work? It is like this. So you go in your string. That integer cast, we're going to do it later. Where are you? The integer cast that you set. That if it's the, an integer inside, I should cast it to an integer. If it's a double inside, I could cast it to a double. We're going to do it later. We're going to add all these things to it if you want to. So it was a cool thing that you said, so I'm, I'm doing that. So um, in here, if I want this thing to be casted to a constant character pointer and return the M data as a result, all I need to do over here is to say operator const character pointer. And obviously, it's a const. And as you see, it doesn't have a return value. This operator overload doesn't have a return value. Why? Because you are casting the return value. The whole objective of this thing is to return a constant character pointer. You don't need to cast it. You don't need to have a return value for this. The return value of the operator is what it's casting. So now all I need to do over here is to say, obviously, this is just a prototype. I'm going to actually implement it in the C, uh, C file, in the CPP file. So I'm going to go to the CPP file. And in here, I'm going to cast that. So uh, string. And I'm going to say return M data. So what happens now when it's needed to be casted to constant character pointer, the compiler is going to call this cast and receive the address of the data of my string. And therefore, if I go back to my main now, a miracle happens, which is, no more error for this, because now C++ knows how to cast it. Now I can do this. Oh, build error. No, what is build error? Oh, might be unsafe. Shoot. Uh, All right, and now I run it. This is what I'll walk through. So as you see, as you see now, not that one. <clears throat> so as you see now, when I actually go through this, in here the, co the constructor happens. The first one, as you see, before the constructor happens, the values are set initialized. Then C string is not null. It comes over here, gets the length, put it in here, which is 6. It adds the length and data, copies everything in there, and goes out empty. We don't care. Now I'm going to say copy name into C string. Because SDR copy, the standard SDR copy at right side, get a constant character pointer, compiler tries to cast name to the constant character pointer. And we just provided that. Therefore, it goes to that cast operator, as you see. And as a result, the address of M data, the address inside M data is returned, and therefore, C string is copied exactly like a regular pointer, and it's printed, and so on and so forth. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? I'm going to do another one so you can see. For example, obviously, if I want to SDR copy, if I want to do this, obviously, if I want to do this,
what I'm going to get is at, at a failure, right? Because we know that it is null. And if it tries to copy null, it's going to crash. It's going to, uh, the program's going to crash. As you see, it crashed with that thing. You see code, yada, yada, yada. And if you actually walk through it, it's going to give you a null pointer assignment. Because this one actually returns a null. And the null cannot be copied. It's going to tell you that something is wrong. So what I need to do, like C out, I want to be able to this. If empty is a valid thing, do that. I want to be able to check empty for validity. What does if needs in its parentheses? What type of a type it needs? Boolean. I'll cast it. So I'm going to come to my string again. And in here, I'm going to say operator bool const, which means if it needed to be casted to bool, do this. Now, let's implement this. String return. So it is good if it's not empty, correct? So I'm going to say not is empty. Done. So now when the compiler tries to see, tries to check my string as a Boolean value, it will actually call this. Now take a look. If I come over here, I can actually, now in here I'm, I'm, I can simply say else see out the string object is empty. A string knows how to handle itself. When it's empty, it's not going to print itself. There's no problem with that. It's intelligent. But C uh, string copy is dumb. It tries to copy, so I have to test. Now if I actually run this, so this is going to be casted string will be casted casted to constant character pointer and in here string will be casted to a boolean right now if i run the program You will see that it comes right to this if statement. Then as soon as it wants to see what it is, it has to cast it to a Boolean. And the cast will result to the call of this one. This returns equal to null. Not equal to null is going to be a false thing. It says over here the object is empty. Got it? So we know what type conversion casting is. Are we OK down to this point? Are we OK? Are we OK? Yes. Okay, what, when, so let's actually write it. So essentially what happens behind the scene is this, SDR copy, CSDR, and in here is const character pointer name. Correct? That's what happens behind the scene. Do we understand that? And in here, what happens behind the scene is if boolean empty, correct? This is what's happening behind the scene, correct? So, your compiler wants to see what is the boolean value of the string, correct? So, now you want to implement that. You come over here and you want to implement, you want to overload the boolean. So you say operator bool, change its meaning, OK? Can I return a double here, you think? Does it make sense? Why? Why it doesn't make sense? I want to return a double. Why it doesn't make sense? 
because I'm casting it to a Boolean. It is supposed to be a Boolean. Correct? So it's redundant information. It's redundant. If I, if I write over here double, you've got to say, what the heck you're doing? You are casting it to a Boolean, and then you're returning a double? It's redundant information. Compiler already knows what it's supposed to return because you are overloading its cast. Does that make sense? Therefore, it says that's redundant. Like, it, it was crazy to, uh, to actually mention over here Boolean. If I actually write Boolean over here, it's crazy. Why are you are telling me? I already know it's Boolean. That's why you don't need to have it. It already knows it's returning because that's what you are casting. Okay? So that's that. So, what is the next thing you want to do with this? Tell me. I'll do it. What do you want this string to do? Pardon me? To concat? So I want to concat to this string. Okay? We can have different types of concat. Like we can overload plus plus to add a, a space after or before. So if it's prefix plus plus, it adds a space before it. If it's a plus plus, it can, or plus equal to, you want plus equal to concat two strings? Let's do that first. So let's do plus equal to concatenate one string to another. So if I want to do that, how is it going to happen? First of all, let me just bring my cheat sheet back up here again. Okay? So now, if I want to concat, how it's going to happen? So I'm going to come over here, and uh, I'm going to go to the H. Split the window. And let's do a concatenation. And we're going to continue adding to this as we go throughout the semester. And you can do it too. If you add to my string, you can always send me your code. Again, I will add your code in here, and I will flag it that this is written by this person. OK, so I will add your contributions to the string class. Add functionalities to it, and I'll take care of it. So now what do I want to do? I want to do a plus equal. So when you do a plus equal, what happens? So So I'm going to say operator plus equal. What do you want to get that's right? You want to get a string or you want to get a C string? You have two choices. <laughs> we can actually do them both. OK, so I'll, uh, I'll go with a string first. OK, so we'll do a string first. So I'm going to create a constant string reference. reference uh, s and obviously I have to return me so I'm going to return uh, string reference right it's going to return the, the result at the end if you want to set something else to it obviously that setting is going to fail miserably but we'll find out so Let's come to string.cpp and do just that. Oh, it already added it? OK. What is this? OK, the intelligence is going bananas. OK, so. All right, so to concatenate, what I need to do is to concatenate, what I need to do is to first find what the length is for my sum of the two things. So the very first thing I need to do, I need to have a character pointer uh, concat or character pointer uh, uh, temp, I'm going to call it. And I'm going to set that one to new character. And in here, it's going to be my length, whatever it is, plus u dot. Actually, the other one has a length too, uh, s dot m length, which brings us to the next thing. 
Uh, if I'm doing that, it's a good idea to actually have a method that returns the length. So in here, I'm going to create a length. I'm going to say uh, uh, size t length const. And I'm going to create that. And that's string length. I misspelled the length. And I return m length. So length of me plus length of s. plus 1. That's the length of the total thing that I need to have. Now that I have the length of both, I copy the first one into it. So I'm going to say uh, u.sdr copy into temp the value of m data. So I'm going to first copy my thing. Now I'm going to sdr cat. sdr cat is done like this. So I'm going to go to my utils, add SDR cat, and add the thing to utils.c. So that's my SDR cat. And that's going to be size t, size t. There we go. So I have the string cat now. Now I'm going to continue coding the thing. So first I do that, then I do u.sdr cat into temp the, uh, the s. I don't need to cast it to anything because s casts itself automatically. So it's going to get its data automatically. We just implemented that. OK? So I do that. After this is done, I'm going to say delete uh, what I have now, because I don't need m data anymore. And I'm going to say m data will be equal to uh, m data will be set to what, where temp is pointing, and return this. So the only thing I need to do over here is to make sure, <clears throat> first, the current object is valid before I do copying, because SDR copy can't do that. So I have to say, if this is valid, do the copying. Correct? And I have to make sure that temp 0 is 0 to make sure that's an empty string. Empty string. OK? Then in here, I'm going to say if s do this, the SDR cat. And the rest is good. OK? So that's it. That's what I have for concatenation. It might be, it might be buggy, but yes, what's up? Why everybody says that? You know what it looks like? It looks like just, at, I really want to, like, please don't be in a, like when you are, when you hear that something has to be deleted after, don't always delete it. May I use something over here? Let's say this is a beautiful note that I have. I want to get a copy of it and add some stuff to it. I create a temporary one. I copy everything into the temporary one, and I add the stuff. Then I throw this away. Do I delete this? No, you just have the whole result in there. You are just pointing m data to temp. If you deleted, everything's gone. All you, everything that you built is in garbage. Got it?
You know, sit, like, follow the logic. It doesn't work. And that's such a common thing. That is such a common thing to do. Everybody think, I allocate, I have to delete. No, think, see if you need to. Okay? So now probably this is going to work. Okay? Probably. Which means I'm going to actually come over here and... Uh, And the quiz starts in three minutes. I'll, I'll test it later on. Get ready for your quiz.